Barwon Heads this morning, but only boat to launch, 6.30. We're right at the bottom of the low. Going out to see if there's any local tuna still kicking around while there's uh, no boat after the time of the morning. This is pretty dark and it's obviously very shallow. So without your, your maps, um, you've probably got no chance in getting out. Um, I think we've been at about 0 0.8, 0 0.6 trying to get out of the water. Yeah, well, I was here yesterday and had a look from the bridge and you can see the sandbar with these big tides, it's moved significantly. So it now extends all the way back out towards the pier. So cutting across now is no longer an option. These bearers here that we can see in front of us, they're, they're our indicators. If the water's over the bearer, we're pretty much not going to get under. So you can see that the marker's there, it's two metres. We're about two, two. So, yeah, it's uh, not ideal. If you don't get back in time and the tide comes in, you're stuck. You're stuck this side of the bridge, which is, uh, yeah, not fun. The tide predictions will give us uh, how big the tide's going to be. I think today it's up to point, well, 1.7, which is huge. So we probably want to get under the bridge at about a metre, 1.1. Shot out the river mouth, we're about 30 metres off uh, Bowen Heads, we're literally on Charmont Reef. Um, there's birds everywhere, look at these working birds. Have a look up here, um, we'll get a bit closer. They're, uh, they seem to be circling a little few of diving, which indicates that the bait's been pushed up. Obviously, the tuna is sitting off them. Find the birds, find the fish. For the bigger fish and the barrels, I much prefer a gannet. Uh, they seem to be the ones who, who uh, feed on the bigger bait. But uh, for these schoolies, the, the mutton birds and um, all these other birds, are, yeah, they're a good indicator, they're still feeding. We've got a Helco laser pro uh, trolling out the shotgun position, and we've got a small five inch blue and white skirt with a push ahead on it for the time being until we find the fish, and then we'll start running um, some bigger gear to see if we can get some bigger models. I like to troll between sort of six to eight knots, sometimes slower, if, uh, like in these conditions, I'll, I'll try and push through at about five and a half, it's a bit harder. I seem to get most of our hookups around that six, seven knot um, mark, but if they're a bit finicky, we'll slow it right down to five, four and a half. Roach's uh, one of Roach's leaks, which he makes these himself, and they're quite good. The purpose of me is, as as I um, am not holding that rod at the moment, we could lose it quite easily. Um, but it's not my rod, so I don't really care. Um, yeah, they're good. He's maxed with a stainless steel clip. It's a nice rope here. Um, he trinks all the all the knots, and then you've got some plastic protectant on the on the rope, and then it's just looped that in like this, so. You can basically put it around anything you want. You can go around here if we wanted. But uh, I've elected to just put it around the rails on the boat here because it's nice and easy. Upside down night ticks, as they uh, they like to say. So with the simrad, you can actually hit the mark, and you mark exactly where they are. I'm just going to loop around and come back on them. Uh, I'm not going to let you too far. Probably about 30, 40 meters, I reckon. And you've changed your gear, what have you changed? Uh, we've taken the small small stuff in and we've put out the big skirts. We've got a Pakula uh, medium sprocket in Lumo colour and a McKenzie um, medium sized lure in the purple and black paint. 
probably doubles on fish of around 80 to 90 kilos. Um, hopefully, Moppy does a barrel ride to tell. Hopefully, me and you'll be excited. But um, I reckon Moppy like, will grab a ride and, and, and I'll probably have to drive, but that's alright. That's the plan. And um, we're going to let anyone that if you go home, home for lunch.